Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I believe this is episode 6. As usual, we're going to go ahead and hop right on into a run here. I think we're going to do another challenge, as always, I guess. I'm not really sure what we want to do. None of these sound that amazing. Like, I'm pretty sure beans is going to have something to do with, you know, beans, as far as, like, the, the spacebar item that just, like, doesn't really do that much. It's in the cards. I bet you have the, like... The card deck or whatever and you probably start with a card or something waka waka though that sounds pretty interesting so are you sure you want me to die i guess so uh we look really terrifying right now and our tears are something i'm not really sure what that's all about it's like they oh that key i don't know what was up with that you know i'm glad i had my coffee before this run i bet if you go back and watch the last episode and then watch this episode you'll notice a complete 180 in my demeanor I guess I don't know I don't like the coffee has this effect on me but it is what it is I guess and maybe it isn't even the coffee you know maybe it's just the fact that I was asleep not five minutes before I recorded the last episode I never record or stream or anything that soon after waking up and that is a good reason why last episode being that reason I mean so it looks like we can sort of like control our tiers. Let's check out our items. I It looks like the left item is probably what's allowing our tiers to stay in the air. And my controller just disconnected, so I'll fix that in a second after I stop talking about this. I think the left one's probably like the anti-gravity tiers that I've been hearing about or something. And it looks like the right one. I don't think that's the magnet or like magneto or whatever from the first one i'm pretty sure that one is like the magnetic tears or something and based on that key that like flew at our face a few minutes ago i would wager to say that that is a probably a correct assumption but i'll be right back i got to fix my controller all right we're back i really don't know why that's happening i'm probably or like i probably have said that exact same line like 50 times over the first like five episodes but i really don't know why that's happening like the controller just flat out doesn't work sometimes or it's like not even the the, the controller doesn't work like when it the controller is connected it works really well like it feels really good to play but when it disconnects which is like 69 percent of the time it doesn't like reconnect and like it seemingly wow that's an awesome way of phrasing that or pronouncing that, I guess, it seemingly just disconnects randomly, which is not a fun feeling. And speaking of not fun feelings, like, my tears are not going where I want them to go. But that sounds like something that we can fix by playing a little better, or just getting good, as they say in the industry, I guess. I don't think there are any tented rocks over there, or I would have tried a little better, or a little harder, I guess, to direct those, or that bomb, a little closer. But kind of a moot point because there's nothing over there for us to get you know i think not only do our tiers attract items which is what i thought they did originally like it seems like they attract enemies as well so i don't see why we wouldn't just be able to sort of like make a line you know or you know we could just have the controller disconnect as well i guess but yeah if we just like make a line like this it looks like the enemies are just going to sort of gravitate towards our tiers and this challenge originally i thought was going to be kind of hard just because it seems like it's kind of difficult to control the tiers exactly i bet if yeah you can sort of just like fire them like normal if you just sort of tap the direction but yeah like this doesn't look like it's going to be all that hard the only problem is it looks like we're going to be in sort of close proximity to all the enemies all the time so hopefully we don't take damage that we shouldn't really take Whoa, okay well that was almost case in point exhibit a for what you shouldn't do Fortunately, we were able to dodge that damage. I thought we were going to for sure take damage there, but let me check out the map. Alright, so, well, we got some bombs, I guess. I don't really know the rules for secret rooms all that well. Well, it's not there, of course. I'm not going to waste all my bombs looking for secret rooms, especially since I don't really know the rules. I'll read up on that for a homework or something after this episode. Or maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should just, like, blindly look for secret rooms all the time. Maybe that would be better. Wow, I thought for sure I was going to take damage there on that creep. Because even though it looked like there was a little room at the top, 
it looked like, or just like in the terms of the game, I thought for sure they were going to be like, nah, man, you're really close to the creep. You're automatically going to take damage even if you don't touch it. But we're going to be able to take out the Gurglings without too much of an issue, I guess. We did take some damage that I didn't really want to take. And I know, you know, you don't want to take damage ever as we pick up toothpicks, which were useless in the first or the original game, I think. But it seems like they're good, I guess, now. But you never want to take damage, of course. But some instances of you taking damage, you being the general you, are less good than others. Like, some damage is like a necessary evil. What is happening with these enemies? Okay, I guess they just got stuck in their like jumping animation or something and couldn't get out. Yeah, some damage is better than others. Like, coming into a secret room is completely different than... Or into a curse room, I should say, is a completely different... Like damage type than taking stupid damage that you shouldn't take from something else all right so i wasn't expecting that but we're gonna take the pentagram because that is a damage up and damage ups are pretty ubiquitously good like i can't really think of a situation where a damage up isn't good unless it puts you in jeopardy of like you know dying or something which we only have two hearts now but i think we'll be fine i'm not really sure what that is I'd love to take it, but I am not going to because I'm pretty sure that at one heart, we would be much more likely to die than at two hearts. It's kind of weird. Like, one heart is... Well, actually, you know, I don't know. Maybe, for the most part, I feel like I play better when I'm low on health than I do if I have a lot of health. But the thing is, if you make one mistake at one heart, it's over. Well, actually, I guess you could make two mistakes because it's like a half a heart damage, but you know, I guess you get the point. I don't trust myself to play at one heart. Alright, I can't... Is this the shop? I don't know. I'm not really used to the new icons on the map. Actually, it isn't even new. It looks like a coin. It definitely was not a coin just a second ago. So, hopefully I'm not going crazy. Or maybe the coffee just hasn't sunk in yet. I'm pretty sure in the last episode, I talked quite at length about coffee and tea. Or maybe I didn't. Maybe that was, like... Maybe that was just a, a stream I did or something. But, yeah. I... I've been drinking quite a lot of coffee. Well, actually, I've drank... Drank? Is that even a word? I don't even know at this point. I guess the coffee hasn't sunk in yet. That's really my excuse for everything. If I realize I'm being stupid, it's really just the coffee's fault. But my stream convinced me to get tea. And it's better than I thought it was going to be. Although, I would still say that it's not quite as good as coffee. I know, like, 90% of my stream would disagree with that. I'm kind of surprised. I thought coffee was, like, a really popular drink but apparently it's not nearly as you know widely accepted as i thought it was tea seems to be like the drink of choice for like everybody that i know anyway we're gonna go ahead and take the breakfast i guess i guess we might as well go ahead and destroy these poops while we're at it and since the devil room opened back up i kind of want to take this just to see what it is dark matter fear shots all right so fear shot i'm assuming is going to do something to the enemies as far as like a status effect i mean i get that just makes sense but the status effect that i'm assuming that it's gonna be is the one that makes them like run away from you well i guess it won't work on these enemies unless we actually deal damage to them or maybe it's like a percentage effect or something well we do so much damage right now that i guess we're not really gonna get to decide or to see what happens on this enemy you know i know why these enemies don't like open up but i feel like unless tears are coming at them maybe they should still open up even if the tears aren't hitting them if that made any sense whatsoever like i said coffee hasn't sunk in yet there we go so we briefly saw a like a purple flash or not really a flash i guess but that was definitely the status ailment unfortunately he died so fast we weren't really able to see what that status effect does if I was trying to, like, just barely pepper them with damage, but okay. Well, that wasn't really what I was expecting because it still charged me, but I think that might have been because of our, like, magnetic tears or something. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume that in normal gameplay without magnetic tears, it would make the enemies more likely to run away from you. That is my final verdict, even though I really have nothing to base that on. That's really cool how the enemy, or like things are affected, or like gravitate towards your tears with this item. That's a really cool effect, I think. So I don't know why I'm destroying this fire. Even if it did drop something, we wouldn't be able to pick it up. And you know, speaking of secret rooms, I think I talked about this in the last episode, 
but I'm pretty sure, like, like I would normally assume that a secret room might be up there. Or actually, it could be here, I guess. That would be amazing. I guess not. But I was reading that if you would need flights, maybe it probably was like this in the original too, but I really never like looked into it too much. If you would need flights to get to where a secret room would be, it can't be there, if that makes sense. So I'm not sure if that's true, but until I hear differently, I'm going to assume that it is true. I'm gonna go ahead and take out these enemies. That was a really easy room because they literally could not fight back. Well, actually, I guess they could have, but for some reason they weren't really shooting any tears. Just gonna, speaking of enemies that can't fight back, this is definitely one of those situations. I'm really glad we picked up that pentagram, by the way, because we're taking out enemies extremely quickly. These enemies are some of the only ones that have been able to fight back for the past few minutes. Alright, so we have quite a bit of money. Might as well come in here. I'm gonna go ahead and buy a spirit heart, just because. We haven't really taken that much damage, I guess, but we're not really getting any more health other than spirit hearts at this point so any chance we can get to pick up a spirit heart i will probably jump on from here on out i'm gonna go ahead and look for a seat room i guess might as well nope did i already check there i might have and i might have just made myself look like an absolute fool i really want to learn the rules for secret rooms because secret rooms are part of my gameplay that i really don't make use of too much and i know there's a lot of good stuff in secret rooms Hopefully we can get by without them until I figure out what I'm doing. Gonna go ahead and blow that. Oh, okay, well, I guess we're not gonna grab that spirit heart. Okay, well, you know, the RNG guides are smiling down upon me right now because even though I wasn't able to get that spirit heart, they rewarded me with two more. It's not very often that I get good RNG in any game. So that tickled my heart a little there, I would say. I'm gonna go ahead and take out these enemies. You know, another thing I'd like to do, or to do, I should say, is learn the names of enemies that is something I never really knew in the first game or the the flash version of Isaac I never really bothered to learn the actual names of enemies or really anything as far as I remember so we're gonna be able to make quick work of this pretty much every boss I'm assuming because our tears do a lot of damage and we can sort of like store up like literally like a spirit bomb at this point like just sort of charge up and let it all fly at one time so we're not gonna have any trouble whatsoever taking care of bosses but i would assume that we're gonna have more of an issue fighting regular enemies that seems to be sort of a theme in isaac a lot of builds you're kind of prepared to fight bosses but for some reason like regular enemies are or like regular rooms i guess are harder to take out without taking damage i guess it's probably because a lot of builds are suited towards fighting like one enemy and a lot of rooms are not centered around one enemy, whereas a lot of boss fights are, so that's my theory. But don't take my word for it. I probably should have picked that up. I think I have a Swallowed Penny, which we unlocked recently, I think? I could be wrong. I don't really remember what it does, though, so probably shouldn't worry about it too much. I'd love to get one of these cards, but we do not have any bombs, so I guess I won't be doing that. These new flies are pretty cool, by the way. The other flies are not a threat whatsoever, but those fly all around, and they are quite a bit of a threat at some some points or some situations, I guess. Well, I just remembered that we have the magnetic tears, or I didn't really remember. The game just sort of reminded me. But we can grab some stuff, even if it is off-screen or, like, out of reach. Because we basically do have the magnetic effect, but it's centered around our tears and not our... Our person so I okay well I was just about to say I don't think we've taken any damage on this floor yet so we're gonna go ahead and pause buffer the damage on the enemy here but we haven't taken until then I don't think we've taken any damage on this floor and I was kind of hoping we could get one of those damage achievements or not necessarily I guess they're called achievements I don't really know or like a, a secret I guess is more of an appropriate term in Isaac Oh my goodness, dude. We're taking so much damage now. So much damage. If we hadn't gotten all those spirit hearts, we'd probably be dead at this point. So we're going to go ahead and fight the boss before we wreck ourselves any more than we currently have. Might as well go ahead and take care of these nubs before we get going on the actual meat of the boss fight here. And I might have commented on this earlier, but it seems like it's a little harder to dodge shots from Gertie. In the Flash version of this fight, like, it was so easy to just sort of like rotate between you know down and aside and you wouldn't take any damage 
And it's still pretty easy to do that, but it seems like it's a little harder. Maybe his shots are faster, or they cover more of a like a surface area of the screen or something. I'm not really sure what it is, but it does seem like it might be a little bit harder. And if I was smart, I probably would have been shooting from the back and not the side. But it's all right, because he is now dead. We're, well, actually, we might get a deal with the devil here. We did. Oh, wait, we did. I didn't see it at first, so I didn't think we got it. But we did get quite a bit of money. The shop is right there. I don't remember what was in the shop. I kind of want to go back and check it out, though. I don't really care. You know, actually, I probably should have still bought it. But, I, oh, dude, did I? I just screwed up, dude. I'm so dumb. I didn't go in the the devil room before I left. So I don't know why I did that. I probably wouldn't have bought anything anyway, but there could have been that situation where you don't actually have to spend anything to get a deal with the devil, in which case I'm going to feel really dumb. But I guess we'll never know, so I should probably not worry about it too much. I was kind of, every time I get to the depths in Rebirth, I'm like, man, today is the day we're going to get Dark Boy, or not Dark Boy, I think that's the one for beating the Dark Room without taking damage, but we're going to get the other, what is it? I don't even remember. It, Dark Boy is the one for the devs, I'm pretty sure, or not the devs, the Dark Room, that would just make sense, but there is one that you get for not taking damage, of course, in the depths, which I can't remember. But anyway, like, every time I get here, I'm like, today is the day we're finally going to get it. And every time I'm disappointed, pretty much immediately. Which is a common theme, I guess. Just in day-to-day -day life. Just going to go ahead and pick up this key, I guess. In challenge runs, keys don't really seem to be as important as really, like, normal runs, I guess. Because you're not really pining to open item rooms which for me are the most important uses for keys like i'm sure that's like a scrub strat or like a scrub mentality i guess shops probably are better or something i don't know i don't really know the meta or anything for isaac i just sort of play i'm gonna go ahead and take out this poop i guess you know that's another thing as far as like the meta goes i never really bother taking out the poop i sort of do it sometimes but like i'm really inconsistent at it and it's something that would probably benefit me it's just like it takes forever to take out all the poop so i don't really worry about it all that often so maybe we can get a secret room here. Nope. I think we're like 0 for like 5 on this run for secret rooms. If I'd opened up a little bit more of the map, I probably would have been able to tell where a secret room was more likely to be than where I checked. Alright, so these brimstone wall things are definitely a bigger threat than the other ones. But obviously, as long as we don't step in their line of sight, we should be fine. And they don't really have that much health either. So... They're really not that much of a threat, I guess. I bet if we had flying, those enemies would be really easy. Because, well, actually, I don't know if you can hit them from the side. But if you can, like, there's no way they could probably hit you. So hopefully we get flying at some point in my Binding of Isaac career, which I'm sure we will. So we can test out that theory. Wow, this is a really long depths. Like, I'm starting to get a little worried that I'm going to die, I guess. We're not taking that much damage, but... We still do have the rest of the Depths 1 and the Depths 2. And the Mom's Hard boss fight. Or not Mom's Hard, just Mom. I think, anyway. As far as... I don't think we have to go to the, the womb yet. I don't think I've been to the womb on the series. I could be wrong. I don't really remember, though. But I'm pretty sure this challenge only goes to Mom. And if that is the case, I'm pretty sure we're going to be just fine. I would love to find another couple of Spirit Hearts, though. Or maybe even just, like, one health upgrade or something from the boss. Or, like, if we get a deal with the devil or something, like, if we got flying or, like, another damage up, I would probably sacrifice a heart for that because at this point, I feel like... Actually, maybe not. That might be a dumb choice. Maybe that's why I'm not in the upper tier of Isaac, you know, pros. I waste all my health on unnecessary deals with the devil. I don't think a damage up right now would really be in our best interest, unless it was free, I guess. Because we're doing quite a bit of damage. We really just need health. And that's exactly what I wanted. Unfortunately, we took damage before we even got here. So, it was kind of a... A hollow victory, almost. But at least we got back to where we were. Also, I can't, like, release my tears. It appears my controller is just, like, completely gone off the deep end at this point. Maybe if I pause and unpause or something. No. So, it looks like my controller is in a constant state of just, like, holding the control stick... So, we've got to play this really stupidly now, unless this is just like a weird side effect of this 
item, which I don't think is true. So, not really looking forward to the rest of this run. Fortunately, it happened like at the very end, and we have a death card, so actually I didn't do nearly as much damage as I was expecting. But at least it took out the flies, but he's just going to spawn more. So, we're going to constantly be firing tears. I don't know if I made that clear. Which actually maybe won't be such a bad thing, as long as we can just sort of like lead them in a line around, like a... Sort of like a, a crumb, like a breadcrumb trail or something. We're leading him to the end, and the end is his death in this case, unless we run out of breadcrumbs, and then in that case, I guess it would be our death. But with the fear shot, it's really, like, it seems like it's driving him away from us, which is probably a good thing, I guess. I mean, we won, and we got a damage up out of that, which is what I wanted before, so I guess it all worked out in the end. But we are on the final floor. You know, I still don't know what that clock does, by the way. That is something I would love to find out. I guess we're doing... Oh, okay. The blood clot, I think, is like a... Like a 50% damage upgrade, pretty much. Like, it only does half of your tears or whatever. Also, this is really bad. Like, I can't release my tears when I want them to be released. Which is not what you want, obviously. Wow, okay. Well, I guess he's going to camp down there in the corner. And I can't really fire my shots down there as well as I would like. Wow, I'm glad that hit him. Uh, okay. Well, we didn't get a drop from that room. For some reason, I thought the doors weren't going to open. In which case, I was going to be kind of worried because I wasn't sure how I was going to get out. I guess I could have bombed the door. Fortunately, we're doing so much damage at this point. Like, even with this controller malfunction, I think we're going to be just fine. Unless they charge at us like that. In which case, we might not be just fine. The only problem with this playstyle is I have to play really close to the enemies all the time. Like, I have no chance for staying away from the enemies, which in Isaac, in some situations, is probably a good thing. For this challenge, when you don't have that much health, I feel like maybe that isn't such a good thing. And actually, when that controller disconnect just happened, it fixed itself, so... I guess we're gonna be fine. You know, I was playing at, like I was saying before, actually I might have mentioned this in the last episode, I was playing at my house, or like my... My, on my a different account basically on a different computer with a controller and it never happened like this controller disconnect problem never happened so I'm pretty sure that this is just a some sort of like driver issue or something with my own computer which is actually like better than some like if something was wrong with the game I guess because in that case like there's not much I could do but since it's my fault I can you know look up how to fix it I guess or maybe like try some different driver settings or something I don't know We've got to be getting close to the end here. I don't foresee the boss room being in the other direction. I'm pretty sure it's going to be down here somewhere. And we pick the right direction pretty much immediately. Which is good because we don't have all that much health. And I'd like to use all this health on this boss fight. Fortunately, I think if we just sort of like pepper this area with tears, we're going to be doing a lot of damage because the enemies are going to be drawn in. And like stray tears are going to be hitting mom's body parts, I guess. Which, so far, we're not really doing all that much damage to mom, so maybe I should try a more, like, concentrated approach to doing damage. I wonder how Fear Shot works on mom, by the way. Because it appears that she's still sort of, like, attacking us, even though we've feared her, or scared her, I guess? I don't really know how you would phrase this. But, as far as I can tell, the th wow, the door is moving. I don't, don't know how I've never seen that before. I guess because I've never had Fear Shot before. Okay, we've taken our first bit of damage, and we've done like a fourth of Mom's health at this point. Which I guess is respectable, but like, I'd really like to get this boss fight over. Because I tend- what happens for me in the Mom's Heart boss fight is I tend to not take damage for a long time. And then I'll start taking a lot of damage immediately. And it's actually not even the Mom's Heart boss fight, it's really just any boss fight. Like, I'll do really well for a long time. And then once I take my first bit of damage, it's all downhill from there. I was just about to say we're doing pretty well, even though we have taken damage, and then I took damage. So I should probably just kind of concentrate here, because we, as far as I can tell, are going to be done after this boss fight. And since we are so close to the end, I would very much love to not have to redo this challenge. Because even though it was pretty fun, it was... Kind of haphazard, I guess. I'm not the biggest fan of this tier effect, but I guess it was made bearable by the fact that we had so much health. And I'm not going to bother doing the boss rush, and I'm pretty sure this will just take us down to... Well, actually... I don't know if we have 
Azazel unlocked yet, or however you pronounce that. And I don't remember if we've taken any deal with the devils yet, so well, I guess I didn't really do anything, but we might have gotten some items unlocked that we haven't unlocked yet. So anyway, we're just gonna go and finish this challenge before my controller just completely explodes in my hand. We've unlocked Death's Touch. That's a really cool item, it looks like. It looks like a scythe or something, which if that works how I'm imagining it works, maybe something like Mom's Knife, that will be amazing. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I'm going to go ahead and try to fix my controller again, because believe it or not, it's actually kind of distracting when the controller is disconnecting every two minutes. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this episode, and I'll see you guys back for the next episode.